Come on, handsome boy. On this episode of Bondi Vet, what's causing handsome Hendrix to smell so bad? I can smell Hendy the moment he walks through that door. I think we might need... Sweetheart, what did you do? Lisa races to save a young dog with bread dough rising in his stomach. As the yeast releases alcohol into the bloodstream, that dog is going to get alcohol poisoning and that can lead to death very quickly. So it's a nice breath there, so um, yeah, he just... Did someone just switch the lights off? And Scott's plunged into darkness mid-emergency. Whole street's off. The whole street's all kidding. You make my world a better place. <laughs> Come on, there's your girl. At the Bondi Vet Hospital, Emily and Dave have just arrived with their adorable 11-month-old Grudel, Hendrix. Oh, he's very sweet, aren't you, Hendrix? But while he couldn't look cuter, Hendrix has a rather embarrassing problem. So Hendrix has had a really itchy, horrible ear for a while now. It's probably been a month, I reckon. Mm, yeah. Lots of rolling on the floor and kind of bashing his head against the floorboards. Yeah. Um, and it stinks. Yeah. It really stinks. Like Jesus, Vegemite. Oh, see, oh, look, there's some scratching. Last night, I could hear him. Woke up in the middle of the night, and I could just hear his constant like scratching of his ear. So he's obviously being up through the night. I think it's keeping him up now. So that's why we've come in today. Hey guys. Hi. Hi, Hi Andy. How are you? How are you? Are you good? As soon as you walk out into that waiting room, Hendrix is itching his ears. They are so itchy. In we go. Let's get these ears sorted out. Come on, buddy. So he's got bad ears. Yeah, this has been a while as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's got worse. Okay. So it's this, it's quite smelly for a start. Mm -hmm. And then the itching's just got quite intense. Um, and even though like we've been cleaning his ears, so I think it hides the smell a bit, but yeah. he's rolling around, kind okay. of bashing his head on the floor. Yeah. Come on, little oh. buddy. Oh. Oh. What is he, 17 okay. kilos? 17 yeah. kilos. Oh, so good. good boy. Now guys, you tell me that he's quite a swimmer. Yes, he loves to swim. Okay. Obsessed with water, um, ocean, giant puddles, giant muddy puddles, which <laughs> as you can imagine, mm -hmm. is a bit of maintenance. He's got beautiful teeth. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Beautiful long eyelashes. Yeah, I'm, I think <gasps> we might need... <gasps> Holy moly. They're very infected. Are they? Yes. As soon as I lift those ears up, it stinks. Oosh. Stinky. <laughs> very, very stinky ears. It's not very good, is it? It's kind of like this sweet raisin smell. I don't even know, but you know, these guys described it really well when they said it smells like Vegemite. I always encourage people to get used to what normal ears smell like. This is not normal. This is not definitely not normal ear smell. Is it handy? It's just a bit of a surprise, I think. Um, yeah, it's just, it has been smelly a while, so it's good to understand what it could be, but didn't think it was gonna be a serious ear infection. We just thought maybe we haven't been putting his ear drops in properly. So just really glad that he's gonna get it sorted today, because I think he's been a bit uncomfortable by the sounds of it, bless him. So all of this here, should be probably not as white as he usually is, but this here shouldn't be this dark. So see this brown colour? Been like that for quite a while too. Well, well I, I just didn't know though. So Emily and Dave think the ears are supposed to be this colour, and they are definitely not. They are supposed to be white like the dog. So they've never possibly seen him with normal ears, which is kind of concerning. So the reason that the drops are not doing anything is because you probably got like a water-based drop um, mm. And a cleaner is not going to fix an infected ear. Oh, handy. Oh, drinks. This would be so uncomfortable. And the only thing that I can think of is if you have some kind of intense itch, like an itch at the bottom of your foot, and you had to put it into a shoe and not itch it like the whole day. 
Like that's what it would feel like. It would be so, so itchy. If I do this to Hendy, yeah. he'll be like, ah, oh, that is so good. Yeah, he loves that. Right? Because yeah. it's so itchy. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a little sample of these ears and I'm going to have a look at it under a microscope. Yep. And then what we're going to do, we're going to actually put something down there that will work. Okay, great. Okay. We could be dealing with multiple things. We could be dealing with certain types of bacteria. We could be dealing with certain types of fungal infections. And what we need to do, we need to establish what this is so I can then decide what I'm going to use to treat this particular ear infection. Ooh, so Ooh. itchy, Handy. We're going to take these little things and we're going to go stain them. I know it smells like your ears, doesn't it? It smells like your gross ears. It stinks. It's scary. But yeah, I guess just hoping that it's nothing too serious. So we're going to stain these and this allows us to actually get some colour on whatever's going down in those ears. Let's have a look at this right ear. Yep, so fungal infection. There's quite a lot of fungus otherwise known as yeast. Fungal infections, they love moist areas. And so anywhere that's wet, like Handy's ears, is a great place for them to grow. And what's happening, not only is he swimming, but he's also having this cleaner that's put down there. And it's just making his ears wetter and wetter and wetter. So it's progressively just getting worse and worse and worse. So we need to stop this in its tracks. Primarily what we've got is what they call a malassezia infection. So it's otherwise known as yeast, right? So, yes, that's the smell. Right. So what we're going to do, we're going to put this down to having excessive moisture down there, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to clean up the yeast. We're going to clean up the bacteria. We're going to put him on an antifungal and an antibiotic. Yes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you guys to start using some prevention once a week. Okay. Nice and still, buddy. Nice and still. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out all of those clumps of fur that are growing down Hendrix's ears and then we're going to give them a good clean. Good See all boy. this gross hair? It's all going. Good boy. See you later, gross hair. When it all grows back, it's all going to be beautiful. Mm. Beautiful white fur, the way it's supposed to be. Good boy. You're such a good boy. I think the most important part of this is getting owners to recognise early when there is a problem. Ooh. Okay, there's a good, that's what's coming out. Rather than letting it get to a point where it's a total mess, having it so that they can actually smell these ears and be like, that is not normal veggie my ears, let's go to the vet. This is your drops, right? These are antibiotics as well as an antifungal. It's just a gentle good boy. resting, good boy. so resting like so, right? You don't have to push it all the way down. Yep. And you need to do a really nice, good squeeze Ooh, down there, okay? good boy. And then a, yeah. But nice. Treat. Soon you won't have Vegemite ears, Hendrix. Yeah, mm. good boy. Are you okay there? <laughs> Shake his <laughs> oh. <laughs> We've kind of felt it that he's not been quite himself, so I think it'll be good over the next few days just to see him feeling a bit better. Okay, like a nice head massage. Oh, so good. So good. You still can't be swimming for 14 days. Well, honestly, I wish he wouldn't swim for two weeks while I'm trying to use the antibiotics and the antifungals down these ears. And I think probably most vets would say swimming is out. But it's summer and it's Bondi. You know, I can't stop the swimming. Come on then. Good boy. Whoa. See you guys. Bye, thank you so much. Thank Good you. Good luck. Call me if you need anything. Will do. Thank Bye, Handy. You. Don't shake your head. Good boy. He'll be feeling heaps better. By tomorrow morning, he'll be a new dog. I swear he's getting heavier. Heavier by the day. Go on three. Thank you, thank you. Lisa's bringing three-year-old Edwin to see Scott, but his weight is not the issue. Hello, handsome boy. So what's Edwin in to see me for today? Um, well, over the last couple of months, I've noticed that uh, he's been having terrible problems with 
getting out of his box. <laughs> <laughs> come on, mate. Wanting to come and see you. Yeah, it's not you. that bad, is it? <laughs> Holding up a delight. Uh, with, um, with runny eyes, runny nose, sneezing. Right. Uh, and at times having episodes of coughing uh, where he just sounds and feels very full of fluid. Right. OK. Well, that all sounds fairly significant, actually. Um, it does sound a little bit like feline asthma. Yeah. So sometimes he sounds a bit like Darth Vader. I feel really sorry for him, and there are times when he's just, you know, seems to be struggling, seems more lethargic. Um, he's still eating, but he's playing less. And then more recently, as I said, the coughing is quite worrying to me. Uh, it's thought that maybe one in a hundred cats in the UK can suffer with asthma, feline asthma. And when we're trying to manage asthma, obviously asthma can be potentially life-threatening. So what we need to do is get ahead of it, uh, diagnose it early, and, uh, and then have them on certain levels of treatment. Asthma in cats does present in a fairly similar way to people. People are short of breath, their respiration rate's high, uh, they're just struggling to breathe, struggling to survive, and exactly the same thing can happen in cats. If we do find that it is asthma, then it can be caused by so many different things. So we do need to sort of mine down into those, find out exactly what causes might be present, uh, and then how best to manage it. But first, of course, we need to sure. effectively diagnose. Sure, okay, that sounds like a good plan, thank you. And just remind me, because um, I don't want to embarrass myself, I know that you're a doctor. What, what kind of doctor are you exactly? I'm an ear, nose and throat surgeon. Yes. Yeah, of course you are. Yeah, that's, uh, yes. that's not intimidating at no. all, is it? No. <laughs> right. I really have to look after you now, Edward, you don't do. I? You do. You do. I feel a little bit sorry for Scott. It's not going to be easy because um, obviously I'm, I'm coming from a specialist background, but uh, I know he'll do the right thing and, uh, you know, Scott's an excellent vet, so I'm very happy to leave Edwin in his capable hands. And one thing I must say uh, is that I have always had a soft spot for animals with human names. Um, I've got the dogs Betty and Dave, and actually the first cat that I ever treated in the UK was called Colin, which I loved. <laughs> yes. So Edwin is right up my street. Toss is perfect. Well, he certainly is. I've never known a cat to be quite so soft as, as Edwin is. Um, he never scratches. He wants to be with you the whole time. He talks to you and loves to lie on our pillows at night when we're sleeping. Bye-bye, Edwin. You'll be a good boy today, and I'll see you later. And you just got... There we go. There we go. Right. Come on, handsome boy. No pressure. Uh, be good, both of you. Right, we'll try. <laughs> we'll try. Say bye, Mummy. Bye, Edwin. Uh, I'm going to sneeze in a minute. Mm. Oh, God. Edwin, I've got a little uh, confession to make, is that um, I'm slightly allergic to long-haired cats, so I'm getting relatively similar oh, clinical signs to you <laughs> right now. Cats do die because of asthma attacks. There's varying degrees of severity, of course, but the worst-case scenario is, yes, they can be alone, they can be stressed, they can have an attack, they're unable to breathe and they can die. You must behave so well, this cat. Such a good boy. Yeah. Certainly the rag doll coming through and is easy going, Yes, nature. very much so. If they could all be like this, our job would be a lot easier. So today it's about trying to diagnose the condition and see how far down the line towards asthma Edmund really is. So first of all, we're going to do some blood work. We're going to be doing some x-rays as well, having a look at the chest and seeing if there's any changes. Buddy. Oxygen on. X-ray. So the news is that it does look like the early stages of asthma. All the tubes leading down to the airways are just a little bit thickened. It shows they're a little bit inflamed. But I do think, looking at this X-ray, there's definitely lots we can do to help manage this condition. But suddenly, what was a routine investigation has turned into an emergency. He's just not breathing the best at the minute. Edwin has crashed on the table. OK, so you just have to start giving me some positive air pressure. Yep. Yeah, we have to uh, inflate the chest to just get a better clarity to that lung picture. Uh, but by doing that, he just stopped breathing for That's a little me. bit. When you have an animal that tries to die on you, you go into autopilot. 
If we got the drops that go under the tongue somewhere. Uh. And all that training that we've done just kicks in and straight away we start giving him some injections to try and stimulate his breathing. And at the same time, giving him positive air pressure, just putting some air back into those lungs, getting him going again. That was him. Yeah, it was him. Yeah. Is that, it wasn't you, no, was it? That wasn't me. There we go, good boy. Oh dear, okay. So that's a nice breath there. So um, yeah, he just decided to... Did someone just switch the lights off? Can you switch it back on, please? But just as the tension starts what? to subside... You're kidding. ..there's another unexpected setback. I think the power's gone. The power's gone. Automatically, there are swear words going through my head, but you've just got to get on with the job. You have to try and not panic. It's tough. Just keep your wits about you and focus on the cat. Keep the ISO off. Finally, we get Edwin breathing again, and then, just out of the blue, the power goes and we have absolutely no light. The only light I've got to look at Edwin with, the emergency lighting. Insane. Uh, we check the power box and everything is up. Whole street's off. The whole street, you're kidding. Okay. The one bit of monitoring equipment we've got is on battery. Thank goodness. Okay. Well, we're not going to be able to do anything more until we have light. Yeah. For second year vet nurse Jess, this is a confronting lesson. It's just a panic, really. For my first time experiencing something like that, it's a bit of a shock. They train you how to deal with these situations, but you're never really properly prepared for it. Oh. Hey. Hey. Oh. hey. Let there be light. <laughs> and a breathing patient. More importantly, so. Yes. Good boy. Right, so now we can see you again. Let's do the next step. To try to find out more about the state of Edwin's lungs, Scott now wants to carry out another procedure. Just as we go to perform the bronchoalveolar lavage, which is putting a tube and then fluid down into his lungs, Edwin decides to stop breathing again. There's too much at stake here. He's far too compromised and there's absolutely no way when a cat isn't breathing, am I going to put fluid down his lungs? We're going to wake this cat up because uh, he's just not stable. It, we're just That's not in a risky. position to go any further at the moment. And doing another procedure which could further compromise his breathing is just not a good idea. Not a good idea for him, certainly not a good idea for us. All right, OK, it's all right, I know. Gave us a fright there, didn't you? We know how much Lisa loves this cat. He's certainly not going to die on my watch, I'll tell you that. But, yeah, it's... Um, hairs on the back of the neck and stuff. Mm. Right, so a very complicated case just got more complicated, OK? Yeah. So you guys need to watch this cat like a hawk, OK? No one leaves the side of Edwin this afternoon. If you need a toilet break, tag in your mate. I was very proud of Emma and Jess. Jess, it's the first time she's seen anything like that. And rather than cry or shake or be in the corner. She was actively participating in resuscitating Edwin and bringing him back to life. She's a good one, that one. Watch this space. This is what we all trained for. Mm -hmm. And you both did excellent, really, really well. So good job, good hustle. Any situation like this, the few hours afterwards are always the crucial ones. Um, he's still not fully recovered. Yeah, this is uh, us set in for the afternoon now when you've got a critical patient you don't leave its side. Hi, buddy. How are we doing? A little bit better than this morning. Are you ready to go home? I need to take you out of your litter tray, though, because you're not helping me being stuck in there. It's been five hours since his near-death experience. Hello, Hello buddy. buddy. He is. Here's a handsome guy. Okay. Look who's that, it's his mummy. So, yeah, eventful day. Um, he gave me a bit of a shock okay. today because we were went through the process, took the bloods, blood's beautiful. We then went to x-ray and just after that he stopped breathing. Uh, and then he decided to not breathe for quite a considerable amount of time. So he had to do external air resuscitation, right. just basically filling his lung. 
Oh, well, <laughs> with, my, with my animals, I have to say it's nothing surprises me, but, uh, you know, obviously Scott and his team are, you know, consummate professionals. Lisa's taken it well, but Scott's decided not to give too much information. Although I'm always completely honest with clients, sometimes there's maybe a little bit too much honesty, and I wonder if we say that we were watching the cat recover in darkness because all the power had gone out. Might have been a step too far, so I think I might tell her that tomorrow. I think you and I thought maybe it was at the milder end of asthma. Yeah. The way he's responded to just basic breathing under anaesthetic makes me think that it's much more severe than we mm. first anticipated. Mm. So I'm gonna be recommending to Lisa that we start with a puffer spray, an inhaler. Just something to be able to provide Edwin with a medication which will cool down the allergic reaction, cool down the inflammation, and get him breathing a little bit easier. Too bad? Indifferent. Yes. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> it's not overly impressed. We will see an improvement, sure. which will mean that we shouldn't get caught out by an asthma attack in the future. So although a scare for me today, yeah. I think the long term is actually pretty bright for him. Can you hear that, Edwin? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. I think he's in good hands. Oh. We've got a diagnosis, we've got a plan, and uh, you know we'll, we'll carry on from there. Yeah. All right, well, mate, mm. your mm. time is oh. done, and I'm really glad that I've been able to send you home in one piece after the oh. scare. Well, thank you so much. Today. I'm sorry he caused you so much trauma. Oh, no worries, mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really hope that he's going to get in this box yeah. a little bit easier than he got out. In you go. Good, Good boy. boy. Good boy. Right, let's get you home and get you some supper. Take care. Okay, bye -bye. all right, take care. Bye bye. Boy, come here, rascal. Me? Yeah. You rascal? A young border collie has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash. Rocket ate a loaf of bread that I was making, and it, nearly an entire loaf. There was all bar about one bun's worth left. What about this big? And uh, we've noticed he's been expanding ever since and looks like he's about to give birth to a litter of buns. Katie and her children are worried about the greedy pup's behaviour. Rocket has been known to eat quite a few things that he's not supposed to. So far he's eaten the arm out of a chair, he's eaten underpants, bras, t-shirts, socks, several pairs of shoes. So he's got good taste, but uh, a bit naughty. <laughs> Hello. Got four, this four is... children here. Which one's Rocket? The big fat one, Hi, full Rocket. of dough. Hi, sweetheart, what did you do? Come through. Thank you. When Katie first arrives, she thinks Rocket has been up to his old tricks again, eating something he shouldn't have. And as soon as I look at Rocket, the first thing I see is that his abdomen is really, really big. He's pulled down a tray of dough, okay. and it was quite a large amount. Um, I'd made two breadsticks. Okay. The biggest concern is that when they have eaten dough and that yeast rises, that yeast can form alcohol. Okay. And then he can actually get alcohol poisoning from it oh, as wow. that alcohol gets absorbed into his bloodstream. So it's a really, really serious problem. It can be fatal. Katie's face literally drops when I tell her how serious alcohol poisoning can be. Yeah, so his tummy is feeling really full and, and uncomfortable there. Yep. As time passes, Rocket's stomach is getting bigger and bigger, which means that that dough is continuing to rise as if his stomach is an oven. So the plan is I'm going to take him out into the treatment room. Yep. I'm going to give him an injection to make him vomit. OK. If he doesn't bring up the dough, then we'll have to give him an anaesthetic and pump his stomach. Yep. If we can't get it out that way, he'll have to have surgery to take okay. have all the right. of dough taken yep. out of his tummy. I understand. Oh, my God, I could really lose my dog. and. Uh... Yeah, that's, that's not a place we want to even go. We've, we lost a dog a couple of years ago and the family's not really been the same since. Sam, we're going to just give this IV. Uh, it's an injection to make him vomit. All right, buddy, it's just going to be a little sting. 
Eating raw bread dough is a serious emergency in a dog. That dough rises from the yeast, and as the yeast releases alcohol into the bloodstream, that dog is going to get alcohol poisoning, and that can lead to death very quickly. It's OK. Look at me. What's going on? It's now a race against time to get the fermenting dough out of the young pup's stomach. All done. Done. It was like a little bee sting. Hopefully, Rocket will respond to this injection and will vomit up the bread dough, because if he doesn't, things are going to be a lot more serious for him. I oh, know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I've made you feel sick. Hey, bud. Good boy. Here you go, darling. Let's get it all out. That's the way. Come on, hun. Good boy. That's a nice big amount. Let's get it out. Out it goes. Oh, good boy. Hey? That's a nice big one. I wasn't expecting such a big vomit. Rocket hasn't stopped vomiting. There is just more bread dough pouring out of his mouth. His stomach was absolutely packed with the stuff. Good boy. Oh, there you go, sweetie. As much as I hate making dogs vomit, I kind of feel good about making Rocket vomit because he's brought up this big lump of dough and he's potentially saved his own life. So there was the one piece of bread. There. And here's the other piece of bread. And then the rest of the liquid is probably just it's starting to be digested. That is disgusting, buddy. Rocket's sitting there with a very sad and sorry look on his face. And I think he's feeling a little bit guilty too. But the exhausted pup's ordeal is not over yet. Lisa wants to run urgent blood tests and the pup will have to stay overnight at Sash. We're running some blood tests on Rocket now. We need to make sure he's not developing signs of alcohol poisoning and that he's not becoming dehydrated. We'll have to keep a really close eye on him while he's in hospital with us. I think Pippa's more worried than anyone, isn't she? She misses her big brother already, don't you? Hey? When I first saw that he'd eaten a heap of dough and he was feeling a bit sick, I said, well, you brought this on yourself, buddy. And that's what happens when you steal things off the bench, because he does it a lot. And, uh, yeah, I had no idea that it was actually quite as serious as it was, to be honest. Hi. Hi. OK. How is Doughboy? All right, so the good news is we managed to get him to vomit out quite a lot of that oh, dough. Good. So two very obvious pieces in there. OK. Because um, some of it probably has been absorbed already, we do need to keep a close eye okay. on him. So it's for the best if he stays in hospital tonight yep. on a drip so that we can flush any of the remaining toxin out of his system. Don't worry, Mike, it's going to be fine. Rocket is not completely out of the woods. He's still at risk of some form of alcohol poisoning, so we need to have him in hospital on a drip to make sure that he's going to be safe. All right, guys, do you want to come see Rocket? Yes, please. Hey, do you want to come see your brother? Yes, yes please. please. Let's go. It's going to be really horrible going home without Rocket. The kids are going to miss him. I'm going to miss him. So let's just hope we can pick him up tomorrow and that everything's OK. Good boy. He feels like he's lost about three kilos. Don't you, hey? You got rid of the buns from the oven, hey? Mm. I know, I love you too. Yes, I do. It's really not going to be easy for the family to leave Rocket here in hospital. He's only one year old, he's just a baby, and they are really going to miss him. I just hope that I can get him home to them as quickly as possible. Good boy. Hey? Bye, we'll be back soon, OK? You be good boy. We'll be back soon. Good boy. I hate walking away seeing him like that, with the drip about to go in and potentially not knowing what the outcome's going to be. So, yeah. We're going to think positively, kids, aren't we? Hi, buddy. How are you feeling today? Hey, come on. How'd you get? It's been 24 hours since Rocket's bread dough binge. Let's have a feel of your tummy, see how you're feeling. He's bright, he's happy, his abdomen is no longer filled with gas. And the good news is he hasn't shown any signs of alcohol poisoning, which means that he's ready for some food and hopefully we'll be able to go home. Rocket, have a look what I've got over here, bud. Sit. Uh, 
I think this is wishful thinking, but set. With Wait. bread off the menu, Rocket will have to okay. settle for good old fashioned Go dog food. Good boy. Rocket has definitely turned a corner today. He's eating well and I think he's ready to go home. Have you seen Dr Lisa yet? Rocket's welcoming committee is anxiously waiting. I think we've all missed Rocket very badly, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, he's the main fixture of the household. He's over there. Hey, me, buddy. What you doing? Hey, hello. Oh, I'm pleased to see you too. Oh, no, he's going to try and fight with everyone. Hello. <laughs> We're pleased to see you too, matey. You've lost a bit of weight. Hey, you lost a couple of loaves. Rocket is a completely different dog from yesterday. He's about half the size that he was. He's full of beans, he's lively. It's good to see him back to his usual naughty self. Thank you so much. No problem. Oh, thank you. Well, I have to keep these ones away from Rocket, I think. Yes. <laughs> knowing his, knowing his behaviours. <laughs> given what happened. You know what? I'm just going to pass on bread for a while. When Katie brought Rocket in, I don't think she realised quite how deadly eating dough could be. But he's responded well to the treatment and luckily he's going home back to his normal self. And hopefully from now on, she'll be keeping that bread dough well out of reach. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very you. much. <laughs> He's going to push you. See you later. Thank Bye. you. Come on. All right.